This episode of Live WP TV is sponsored by the Microsoft Nerd Center in Cambridge and HostGator.com. Uh, so I'm going to be talking about importing content uh, with the uh, WP CLI. Um, so I'm Kelly Duan. I'm a web engineer at Tenup. We're a uh, WordPress agency specializing in enterprise sites. And I'm going to talk about writing content. Um, so who's had a client or, or a personal site or anything with more than 50 posts or something that you needed to import? Yeah, um, that's not fun because if you don't have something automated, then you have to do it by hand. Like, you know, if, especially if you're moving from a different CMS and there isn't an importer for you, like, no one likes it. Um, but your content's important, so you have to move it over. Um, so but how do we actually do this if your content is custom? Whether it's a separate CMS, maybe it was a custom CMS that you're moving from. Um, uh, luckily, content is fairly universal. It generally follows this kind of structure of your content, any sort of attached meta and taxonomies. In WordPress, the content is the stuff that's in the editor. So like, literally your post content, what you're writing, your title, um, that's what I'm talking about when I say content here. Uh, any meta is if you've ever used custom fields or um, even if you've uploaded a post thumbnail or featured image on a post, that's still considered meta. Um, and then taxonomies are tags and categories. Or any custom taxonomies you can know. Does uh, so anyone have any questions about that before I skip ahead? Uh, when you're importing, the first step that you want to do is to identify those concepts in your uh, source database, or just data in general. Um, I'm going to be talking about importing from, directly from the database. Um, so what you want to do when you're looking at some other content uh, is trying to identify what the content meta and taxonomies are so that you can know how to map it into WordPress. So we're going to talk about how WordPress structures this first. Um, now, this like actual database, how WordPress is stored in the database. That's what we're talking about. Um, so this, these are the tables that are um, created when you install WordPress on the server. And um, so you get comments, links, options, post meta. Well, where exactly is the content? That's in WP posts. And if you were to open this up in any sort of database program, um, if you could use phpMyAdmin, uh, there's one put out, I think, by MySQL. Uh, I use SQL Pro. You can look into it and see the content inside your database, and you'll see your posts. Your meta, your custom fields, they're all stored in post meta. Um, so that is also going to be uh, you can look at look at that and see all of your your meta there. Um, does anyone have specific questions or want me to slow down, go over something specific? Okay, I'll the proud try. Um, uh, and then taxonomies and WordPress are stored in three tables, and that's for. Um, specifically the terms, the items that your categories are. Um, the, uh, the taxonomy is the ca is category or tag, uh, or post formats are also taxonomy. And then the relationships table is for relating the uh, term to the post or page or whatever. So uh, in the interest of time, I'm going to skip the source database review. Uh, we'll get into that as we're working through uh, writing the import. So, uh, WPCLI. Uh, 
Uh, why should we use command line? Uh, browsers aren't really meant for a batch process. Um, if you've ever had an import timeout on you, or uh, you just had to sit there and wait, hoping that it finishes, you just you know you try to get around it with some like Ajax magic. But the command line is really kind of meant for this sort of repeated process. So. So, has anyone heard of the plugin Regenerate Thumbnails? Okay, so um, when you are creating a theme or something, if you create a custom image size, um, if you already have images, then your new custom image size won't apply to the old ones, old images. Uh, you need to run something like Regenerate Thumbnails to create this new size. Um, so it literally goes through all of your images and will um, it, it will hit an image and it will create a new size, a new image for that. So if you have a lot of images, then you have to sit there waiting for it to process. So you know we can see. That's all there we go. So here we are. I only have about five images on the site, so it's not going to take a while, which is kind of the point. But you'll see that you have to sit there and wait for the bar to go across. And if you have a thousand images, it's going to take a while. Um, and for being a batch process, like this particular plugin does it very nice in browser. But we can also do in command line. Uh, WP Media Regenerate will do the same thing. It will ask me first, do I really want to regenerate all of my images? Yes. And it goes through and it's processing each image. And I can let it go and I see, you know, okay, it finished regenerating all images. Um, the benefits to this, well, first of all, this is a core uh, WP CLI command. So if you install WP CLI, you don't have to do anything to get to this. Um, this command. Uh, I'm not going to talk about installing WPCLI. Uh, it's fairly easy on the website. Uh, it's WPCLI.org. Uh, it should just be running that uh, one, com one uh, command. But I haven't done that in a little while. Uh, uh, questions so far? Um, so let's say if you have a more media heavy uh, WordPress page where you have a ton of photos and videos, would it do the same thing? Would it be able to regenerate the thumbnails for the videos also or just the photos? This just goes through the images in your media library. Now we're going to jump into some code. Um, first of all, we're going to talk about uh, commands and subcommands that you can create in uh, when writing, uh, a, I guess, a plugin for WPCLI. I'm not really sure what you call it. If you're writing a command. So in the thing we just saw, uh, WP Media Regenerate, media part is the command, and regenerate is the subcommand. Uh, your command is going to contain all of the aspects of your import. So I don't know what the other um, media subcommands are. I know with posts, you can do things like WP post um, edit and then an ID number, and you'll be able to edit the post on the command line. Um, you can do WP post generate, and it will generate random posts for you. Um, so the post. The, the command is kind of like a container for your subcommands. And as such, when we create an import, it's going to contain all of the aspects of the, the import like that. What we'll be creating is a command to um, import a single post, and then expand that out to import all of your posts. So you'll have um, maybe, I call the single one update and your um, batch could just be import. 
makes sense. Make your own names. That makes sense. So we're going to create our plugin.php, and it actually is just a WordPress plugin. So, um, like you would create any other plugin, you're just going to create a uh, PHP file, file um, give it the proper plugin header, and then you're going to call uh, if defined wpcli and wpcli, then include this other file. The if defined part is saying if we are doing wpcli. This way it's not loading on uh, just your regular browser WordPress. Uh, browser-based WordPress. Inside uh, our cli.php, then we're going to have, um, we're going to create a class that expands the wpcli command, and um, we'll put all of our subcommands inside here. And at the end of the file, we're going to add a command, our port, and it's going to be our import. So we're defining this name as our command name. Creating a basic subcommand. Now we have subcommand. So we've created a new function inside uh, our import. Right now it's just hello. And it's going to. Uh, what that does is. Come up here. Our port is now a uh, command, and you can say hello, and it says hello, Kelly. Um, so what we did just there was um, this the particular function is called with these args and associ args. Uh, variables, and uh, so args is positional, so you, it's just the first thing that follows the command, the subcommand. Um, you could also do hello kelly come on, but it's not going to know that there's something else after there. Um, the space was what delineated as a second argument. Uh, a social args is something that's more like key value. So you can pass in so a typical computer science example. Uh, foo bar, but it's telling me it doesn't know what foo is. Uh, but if I if it was um, if we were handling for that, then it would say then we could say like so args not and if we did something with that, we would have bar to work with. Uh, questions right now? Uh, so, as you can see so far, it's uh, writing a WPCLI command is really just PHP. You don't need to be intimidated by it. It's just writing something you already know. If you're familiar with plugin, writing a plugin, then writing a WPCLI command does not should not scare you. Um, before we get into any sort of import, uh, back up your database, whatever you're importing into. Um, as soon as you start importing anything, you're going to be adding stuff to your database, and you probably want to be able to undo. Um, if you create an ex uh, if you create a backup of your database, even if it's empty, you'll be able to go back to when it was empty, uh, in case you accidentally import everything you meant to import as posts, as pages or something equally easy to mess up. Um, so now we have to connect to the database, our source database. Um, because we're in a WordPress environment in WPCLI, we can just use the WPDB uh, class to connect to the WordPress database, um, which we're actually not going to touch on. But um, to get to your source database, you're probably going to need an external uh, a second database connection running. Um, 
Another alternative would be to dump all of your source database tables inside your WordPress database. Um, that feels like a messy approach to me, so I don't usually do it. So What I've done here is I've created this uh, variable DB that will be available to all the functions in my class. And I've created this function setup, which does, um, which does a database connection. Um, all I really have to do is pass in my database information and it connects. I'm not going to go over how to connect to a database in PHP, um, just the fact that it does that. <coughs> Uh, then, so I also created another uh, subcommand test just to test the database connection. So if we go over to our database, we can go port test. It's going to tell me that it's not going to work because my password is wrong. Uh, so it says we can't connect. Um, there is a user, there is a password, but I can't connect. So save the new password, and now I can connect. So now I've connected to the source database, and by virtue of being in a WordPress environment, I'm connected to WordPress. I need to make these two things meet, um, and actually start creating my content from my source. So now we're going to write up a function that imports a single post. Before I hop on that, uh, questions? So now I've created two more functions. Um, I have, we have update. Um, so I didn't mention that there, we have, we're using public and private keywords here. Um, anything that's public will be displayed as an option that you can use as a subcommand. So if you were to just do maybe the hour port, it's going to tell me. I can do hello, test, and update, which we just added. Uh, if I left out private, then this import also comes up, but that isn't handling any, it isn't handling being a subcommand, so we're going to call it private. Uh, and then the synopsis, uh, that tells you that there is a required argument ID, just like uh, hello, so this is a required argument name. Um, the fact that it's called name and then my variable is called name are totally unrelated. That's just, this name is just um, a user, user friendly kind of thing. Like when you do WP teleport, it's going to ask me for a name. So it says I need to say a name. So jumping into update. So our source database has a table called posts, and it also has a table called uh, post contents. Um, so posts has things like a post ID, a member ID, which is the author, um, a title, a slug. These are like WordPress things that um, you should know if you're familiar with WordPress database or WordPress content structure. Um, that it has a date and it has content. But then this, this post contents table kind of throws you off. Um, what it turns out to be in this particular CMS uh, is if there's a second page of content, then it gets put into post contents. So you need to remember that and make sure that you uh, smush the two together, basically, when you're importing. So we grab all of that from the database. Um, we are specifically grabbing only one ID or only one post based on an ID we pass in it. That's why the ID parameter up here is required. 
Um, so we do that and then we get our one row and we pass it out into this import function. The reason I've ex abstracted it a little bit into update and then import is so that when we do go into our next step and write um, the function that will go over all of our posts, we can then just repeatedly call import with this post you know, for per row uh, from the source database. It just makes it a little bit easier to have, first of all, to test on a single post. Um, and then once you're done, if you need to go back and fix anything, it's easier to update a single post rather than try to rerun 1,000 posts or 10,000 posts. So in import, import is where um, kind of like everything happens. We're going to throw our content. Uh, so everything in post is an array. Uh, post is an array with all of your uh, information in it. For just easier use, we're throwing post content into this variable content. Um, and then we're going to check if more content, which was the, um, the post contents, um, extra content, that weird second page thing, um, if that exists, then we're going to also add it on to content. These are just things like you have to know about your database and your content. Um, if you were doing any sort of like replacement, uh, URL replacement or something like that, you would do that here. Um, we could also do author mapping. Um, in this case, there's not actually, but you could have a function like get WordPress user by getting the post author. Maybe if uh, post author is an email, you can do a lookup to see what authors already in WordPress have the same email as the author from that source database. Then we're going to create another array that has the new author that we've grabbed, your uh, altered content, uh, the date, um, the post name is actually the slug, post title, uh, and then we're just going to set everything we import to be post, and we're going to set it to be published. And then the magic function is wp insert post, and that creates our post and returns a WordPress ID. Um, as I've mentioned <laughs> in my comment here, in a real import we want to handle an error. Um, I'm pretty sure it just returns false if it doesn't insert the post correctly. Um, and you'll want to handle that, say, maybe print out an error or um, maybe even <coughs> fail the entire import if, uh, if something goes wrong here. But if we manage to get past this point, then nothing went wrong and we have a WordPress ID. So we want to throw an into post meta just an imported ID that says that this post, it was imported and it uh, corresponds to this ID in the source database. That's useful information to have in case you have to do any sort of updates or maybe debugging later, you know. Uh, I see in WordPress that this post is, you know, is broken. Can you check the source, sorry? Um, can you check the source database and see uh, if it was broken originally, or is it something that happened in the import? When you have the ID uh, in the import in the WordPress database, you don't need to go searching like find this title. So that's um, it's convenience. The next thing we're going to do is grab some metadata. So in this fake uh, original database, uh, we have. Um, we have a table called metadata that has uh, metadata in it. <laughs> and so we're grabbing uh, from where in that table we want to grab the thing that has the key audio embedded and that matches this post ID. That way we're grabbing um, the, the, the audio that matches this post. And we're going to, if it exists, we want to add it as a uh, post meta and set the post format to audio. Your screen's a little dark right now. It's flux. Uh, uh, 
No, that was that was me. <laughs> uh, cool. And uh, with that, we're going to say that step four is complete. Um, the next step will be to add images, uh, to add media importing. Uh, so we just print out a success. This was imported, and we can even test it. We're going to um, update one, which is um, we're running this import on the source database with for the post with ID one, and it says that it's successfully imported, and the WordPress ID was nine. And if we hop over to here, there is now this new post that wasn't here before, and I probably should have showed you the table before we imported. Um, but you can see here it's this post that we have to keep, and if we view it, then it has content and an image. And right now the image is still pulling from the source database. So that's not in the media library right now. Uh, the next thing we'll want to do is to attach taxonomies. Up until here, everything had been the same. Now we just added some uh, code to grab the tags and the categories from the source database. And um, database, the um, tags are just um, using this function, set post terms, we're able to set um, any taxonomies on to a post. Um, in this case, it's WPID, that's the ID that we got from uh, our import, uh, from our insert, um, and we're importing uh, we're attaching the terms in the post tag taxonomy. Terms is coming from our database uh, database query, which gives us back um, an array of arrays, which isn't very useful. Um, it's not the format that set post terms expects. So we're using uh, WP list clock, um, which if you've not heard of that function, it's really useful. It will pull out everything that has the key tag inside the array of array, uh, array of arrays terms. So it, it compresses it down into something that uh, set post terms expects. So now we can say um, set these terms um, on this post. We do pretty much the same thing with categories. Um, with tags, you can just type in text in the post editor. Um, and it will just create your tags for you, and that works. In categories, you have to go in and like check boxes for them. Uh, that's because categories are uh, assigned by ID rather than by just by name. So we have to do this extra step, um, converting our source categories to WordPress categories. Um, that can be just like you can create a category on the fly. You can search for a category if it exists. Um, and that will do the same thing up until here, and this grabs all of the category IDs, and that's what we want. <coughs> that's what we want for our category uh, set post terms. Questions right now? What's the what's the three cat? Uh, that's a function that you would write in your own uh, file. I think I have a placeholder. So right now it's just returning the category, um, but what you would want to do is something like if term exists, uh, I think, would be the right function, and that will, if there is a term, it will return the term ID and term taxonomy ID, and you'll use that to uh, insert in that set post terms. Other questions?
Step five is to actually grab that media. <coughs> so here's the categories that we just finished going over, and under that, we're going to do a regular expression to pull out all of the HTML image tags from the content. Then from that, we want to save, or we want to, if there are matches, we want to go over each match, grab the file name out of it, that's two, uh, because that's the, where it's matching in the uh, regular expression. We want to save, so we want to grab the file name. We want to grab the image, the, like the um, image tag. We're going to use that for when we go back to uh, replace the old image HTML with the new image HTML. So the first thing we're going to do is make sure that our file name is okay to import. Uh, if it is a valid file uh, file type, and if it exists on the old server. Um, so if you're um, you're importing a site and they used a whole bunch of images that were pulled from other content, you might not have the like. It might not be cool copyright copyright wise. Uh, to pull all of those images down, so you should make sure that um, the file name is does match the uh, source database or source website. And if it doesn't, then continue. Skip this particular image tag and keep going. So the magic function in this uh, group is media sideload image, and that when given a file, a URL to a file, and a WordPress ID, it will download that, uh, that particular image, and it will attach it to your WordPress post. Um, what it returns is actually an HTML for an image, which is why we saved the matching image tag um, up above. So if that wasn't an error, then um, we want to replace our, in our content, we want to replace the old image with the new image. Now, now that we've done that, that doesn't actually do anything because content, that, that variable, doesn't <coughs> apply to our post in the database, so we need to update post. Um, for update post, you only need to pass in the ID and the fields that have changed, so we pass in WP ID and post content, and pray now we have our image. So let's see. If we go over here, uh, you'll see that my URL is local WordPress, local.wordpress.dev. But if I look at this image, which you probably can't see, that says redradar.net. So it's not pulling it from. Uh, it's not pulling it from this local. It's not in the media library. If we were to try going there. Yet. Uh, so there's much bunch of other photos, but no dancing cat. We import it again. Um, there's no check here to see if I've already imported a post, so it's going to turn around and tell me successfully imported post 10 when I do this. Uh, so now we've imported post number one twice as 9 and 10. But if we refresh in the media library, now we see the image. It was imported. And oh, you see, before, when I first imported it, we hadn't been assigning tags. Um, but now, this is the most recent uh, imported post. And it does have that tag on it. It also has the correct publish date of a few days ago. So if we were to view it, we'll see that it's at, uh, coming from local WordPress dev. The next step would be to import all of your posts. Um, I didn't write that function here, um, but it would just be very similar to our first function update, or our first subcommand, I should say. Um, you don't need to get an ID. Um, instead, you'll just select all, no limit, no 
probably go where, unless you want to, um, restrict certain posts. Um, and then you'll either pull all of your posts in, or you'll pull them in batches at a time, and then loop over each row to do um, this import function. Questions now? Some helpful tips when doing this. Um, even in doing this in command line, it can still take time to run. Um, I've had imports of like a few thousand posts still want to take a few hours because I'm pulling images down. Um, that still needs to download the image to your computer or to the server you're running, WPCLI on, um, and then upload it to WordPress. So, the uploading shouldn't take long because it's going to be the same server, but um, it's still like the, you're pulling each file down. Um, so you can decrease time per post by not importing images. Maybe um, maybe you don't need to import all of your images, or if they're going to stay where they are on the server, then maybe they don't need to be in the media library. <coughs> Um, maybe you can just change file names if you need to using some kind of string of words. Um, just figure out ways you don't need to download things. Um, if you want to skip unnecessary meta or taxonomies, um, if your old CMS had meta related to something that you're not even using in your new WordPress site, then you don't need to import that meta. Um, I mean, unless, I guess, if, if preserving data is very important, then I'd import it. Um, but if it's really something CMS specific and it's not going to be useful, then you don't need it. Um, using WPDB to insert content directly into the database is a good trick for speed, but it will also, like, um, you have to know what you're doing and make sure that you're not skipping any important steps or required. So if you're going to do something like that, I would read, the, read how WP insert post actually works. Uh, I believe that it does run some filters um, on your content, which could uh, make it take a little longer. Um, but that also those content or those filters probably have use. Um, I know that the core importer I think doesn't use WP insert post. It also does direct database insert, uh, and there's a comment that they do it for speed. So that could also be something if you wanted to look at how core or how the for supported importers are working, then that would be a good place to look. Um, this is about it, so questions? I understand that you describe the process <coughs> copying content from WordPress to WordPress. I have SQL database, Microsoft SQL, of totally different structure. But I want to import like, thousands of users into a new WordPress site. Okay. What can be done or what can be um, okay. I didn't cover any of the user functions, but there are, um, there's WP insert user. Um, I would start looking up um, how WordPress creates users and learning about how the structure of the database is. Um, <coughs> and there's a there's users and there's a user meta user meta table, uh, so you'll probably be importing directly into both of those. Uh, I don't know if that helped your answer your question at all. Have you done? I've imported users from another CMS, um, but not from something on PHP MySQL. <coughs> So this is important into WordPress. Would the process of exporting out WordPress be similar? Using the WPCR to do that? Yeah, I suppose. I haven't needed to do that, but yeah. And my other question is that um, I tried to install the WPCLI, but I got issues with like having it compared to work with command. <coughs> 
Yeah. We just met locally for um, you know, Adobe WordPress and uh, PHP in my school with men. It doesn't really work very well with the Adobe CLI for some reason. Um, Do you have any tips on that? Uh, I know that, how long ago was it that you tried it selling it? That was, um, the, I had an issue with MySQL about a month or so ago, and PHP was just today. Um, PHP just today. Um, I'm not sure, because I know the import, or the installation process has changed somewhat recently to theoretically be easier to handle those sort of things. Um, I don't know if it's working. I don't use MAM, so. What are you using instead of MAP? Um, Vagrant. So it's um, it's uh, basically VirtualBox um, setups. I'm not entirely sure how to explain how it works. Um, but it basically just gives me a server uh, in a virtual machine on my computer that I can use for all this development. Um, if you're interested in learning about specifically WordPress uh, vagrant use, you can look at uh, Jeremy Felt, one of my coworkers, um, wrote up a vagrant thing. There we go. It's on GitHub. So you can use this. Um, it's really easy uh, to get started up. Uh, and I think that he has instructions in here. Although this is on the 10up uh, GitHub, it's called Varying Vagrant Vagrants. It's awesome. Um, and Kevin is in the contributors. So. <laughs> um, any other questions? And I guess that's it.